1995 Ryder Cup went to historic old Oak Hill Country Club in Rochester, New York for the first time. Lanny Watkins, the American captain, Bernard Gallagher in charge of the Europeans for the third straight time. American rookie Tom Lehman in the opening foursomes to the par three fifth, already three up along with Corey Pavin. Haven makes the birdie to threaten a runaway against Nick Faldo and Colin Montgomery. But we should know better. Faldo, under a morning drizzle, got the match back to all square here. But in the end, with the match all square, Faldo needed to get close here to have a chance at 18, after having been in the rough. He and Montgomery lost one up, and the Americans had the lead. Davis Love now. He and Jeff Maggard facing Howard Clark and Mark James, and they would go on to win that match four and three. Not the best of days in upstate New York, but play continued. This was Bernhard Longer at 18 to pair with Per Ulrich Johansson and beat Ben Crenshaw and Curtis Strange, one up. And the matches would go to lunch, all square. Time to dry off. Rain continued in the afternoon of day one of the 31st Ryder Cup at Oak Hill, but so did play with a little help. Lauren Roberts in a bit of a mess here, paired with Jeff Maggard, but this is how their afternoon went as they beat Roca and Sam Torrance six and five. David Guilford paired with Seve Ballesteros putting from the fringe at 13. They would go on to beat Brad Faxon and Peter Jacobson four and three, the only European victory of the afternoon. And the U.S. took a 5-3 lead into Saturday's play. The skies over Oak Hill cleared for day two of the 31st Ryder Cup as the Americans took a 5-3 advantage into the morning foursomes. The rain might have been gone, but there was still lightning in the area. This is Costantino Roca to number six. The third hole in one in Ryder Cup history. As C and Sam Torrance drum Maggarts and Roberts, six and five. Colin Montgomery now through the morning shadows to number 15. He and Faldo facing Jay Haas and Curtis Strange. Faldo would make that putt and they would eventually beat Haas and Strange four and two. And going to the lunch break suddenly, everything was deadlocked at six. Byron Nelson stopped by for some American inspiration before the afternoon four ball competition on day two of the Oak Hill Ryder Cup. Sam Torrance now to the 13th. He and Montgomery down three at that stage to Couples and Faxon. Though the Americans missed the green, no problem for Fred Couples. He and Faxon go on to a four and two victory and the U.S. leads it seven to six. Ian Woosnam now paired with Roca, part of their steady play en route to a three and two win over Crenshaw and Love. A Phil Mickelson, Jay Haas victory over Seve and David Guilford had the Americans up just eight to seven, setting up Corey Pavin. A cross country putt for birdie at 18 to put him and Lauren Roberts up one. Faldo to match, albeit from a bit shorter distance. And now to 18, Haven with the chip from the fringe to go one up. Look at the determination on the Bulldog's face. Faldo must make for the half. And so the Americans lead it after two days, nine to seven. First time the U.S. had had the lead going into the singles competition since 1981.
The Americans feeling very confident with the two-point lead going to Sunday's singles at Oak Hill in Rochester. And the fireworks came early and they came often. Seve, as only Seve seemed to be able to do, scrambling against Tom Lehman. But somehow the American hung in and needed this putt at 16 to close out the Spaniard. Lehman wins it four and three, and the U.S. lead is 10-7. Howard Clark now at the par three 11th. Could it be the second European ace of the weekend? Indeed, he would go on to a one-up win over Peter Jacobson. Fred Couples now to square things with Ian Woosnam at 17. That match ended that way as they split a point. Colin Montgomery facing Ben Crenshaw, the approach to 16. Monty would go on to win that match three and one. Sam Torrance needed only a long two putt at 17 against Lauren Roberts. The match is now back to all square at 12 and a half points apiece. Jay Haas facing Philip Walton out of the bunker at 16 to cut the deficit to one in that match. Up ahead, Curtis Strange one up on Faldo, but suddenly the putter begins to fail. The European sensing this was the swing match and all eyes on it. Faldo from nearly the same spot for par to square the match. And now at 18, Curtis Strange, the controversial captain's pick for par, his third straight bogey. Faldo for par and the victory. And the Europeans have their first lead of the 1995 Ryder Cup. Leaving the two putt heroics to young Philip Walton at 18. He beat Jay Hawes one up and the Europeans stun the Americans by a point to take the Ryder Cup back across the Atlantic. <laughs>